crikey. Oh, that's a decent size loofah. But I'll tell you what, once these loofahs get to this size, they're only good for keeping seeds and sponges. But you know what? I've had a lot of fun growing a ton of vegetables over the last several years. And I've even had more fun sharing these awesome results with you guys. There's plenty more to come. But what are the main reasons overall for our food growing success? G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of vegetables. Let's get into it. Now I'm gonna make this brief because I've mentioned a lot of this in recent videos. And if this is the first time you've seen my content, then I recommend you go back and check out the rest of my video catalog, go to the gardening playlist and just binge watch it because I guarantee you'll not only get a whole heap of gardening tips, but you'll have reoccurring dreams of yours truly saying, get into it. And who wouldn't want that? Asparagus dies back at this time of year, so I'm gonna put this loofah in there and let it dry out it'll get plenty of sun in a few weeks time we'll be able to peel that back and make a sponge out of it anyway number one is sunlight to have a productive vegetable garden you need at least six hours of sunlight but i reckon you need more than that if you're getting really serious about growing vegetables i reckon aim for about eight to 10 hours of sunlight and that's exactly why we positioned our garden where we did right in the middle of our acreage here in a big bare patch of ground yes we're surrounded by trees but those trees very rarely encroach on our vegetable garden until the late afternoon but i think it's even more important if you are living in a temperate or cool or cold climate to get as much sunlight as possible. Sunlight is what's needed for your plants to get that energy it requires to grow strong and healthy. And food producing plants need all the energy they can get because if they don't, they just simply won't be as productive as they should be. Also consider where that sun will be during the winter time. Well, here the sun is quite low in winter which means if we would have positioned our vegetable garden say closer to the right side of our property or closer to the orchard there is a good possibility that we wouldn't be getting much sun at all through the winter time number two is soil now i can safely scrape this back here because there's nothing growing but i've worked in a lot of manure and organic matter into this soil for this new crop one thing I'll say from the get-go is if you think you can just buy the best soil possible, you're wrong. Good soil is grown, it's not purchased. You have to grow your own soil and you have to look after it. Soil is a living thing. And I know that some of you will be thinking about hydroponics and aquaponics and volcanic rock and even sand. And that's true, you can grow vegetables or some types of vegetables do pretty well like strawberries and salad crops in hydroponic systems but it's a lot harder to grow a good crop of potatoes for example or asparagus or onions in hydroponic systems i'm not fobbing them off i'm just saying you'd have to use those and i would use those systems as complementary to my proper vegetable gardening area which is a raised bed system or an in-ground system primarily using organic matter and soil. And now I could go a lot further in detail of why I think growing in good live soil is best, but that's another video. And of course, I'm not saying don't buy soil. I mean, I do, I buy my own soil as well to be able to prop up beds. I try not to, I try to get as much fill from other areas, create my own organic mass to keep topping up these raised garden beds. But sometimes if you're building new ones like I will be doing very shortly, you do need to buy some soil and you might still be able to grow a lot of good things in it with the proper applications of fertilizer until you can get that proper structure going. And the way you grow your soil is by adding things like compost 
animal manures, those things that have their own structure, rather than trying to improve the soil through handfuls of pelletized or synthetically constructed commercial fertilizers. I do a lot of strange things to improve our soil here. Just in these beds alone, I can give you several examples. Anything natural goes into these garden beds and over time, they all meld into one to create a really excellent growing medium. Number three is ecosystem. You'd be surprised at how many animals, especially beautiful little green frogs, you would find in this bunch of turmeric here. Over the past 10 years, I have done my best to attract good beneficial birds, insects and other animals into our vegetable garden area. And I've done this by leaving as many natural native trees around the property as possible, using them as a gateway from the bushland into our property. And by also not going overzealous in pest control. And you think that's counterintuitive, but it's not. If I see the odd caterpillar or the odd grasshopper in the garden, I leave it alone because I know a frog is going to get it, a bird is going to get it, another insect or a wasp is going to lay eggs in it, and those pests are going to be used as food and resources for all the good guys that want to visit here. The more of these beautiful creatures that we have on our property, the better control the pests are, and the less chemicals you have to use. Break that cycle and you break the habits of those animals that then starting to rely and hang around and you get kookaburras and magpies and butcher birds here now nest in the property because they see it as a source of food. Number four is growing space. Now I've talked a lot in my videos about how much you can grow in small spaces and that's true but if you are going to feed a big family or even a family of four and you're going to use your garden to do most of that feeding well you really do have to have a decent sized area. Now when I say decent I don't mean like a big farm. You can see this certainly is not. And when you take into account our small acreage, which is three acres, this part of the property is very small considering the whole size of our property. The front of our vegetable garden here is just 12 metres and the length is 26 metres. All up we've got 312 square metres of vegetable growing space. Yes, you could have complete furrows along here and dig in ground and that would give you more space with little thin paths. That's also a heck of a lot more work and harder on the back. And that's another point about space and growing and being more productive. If you physically can't be more productive because it's hard work, well then you're really cheating yourself. Growing in raised beds like this is easier for me and that means because it's easier, I can grow more food. But during these times, I have to pose the question to you, are many people that are currently living in the city on lockdown considering moving out once this is all over, or even now? Are they considering what value it is to have a patch of land where you can be perhaps confined to home but still have plenty of space to roam. Number five is effort. You must be prepared to work in the patch. Speaking of working in the patch, these three overgrown raised garden beds here were the originals that we put in in 2006, but now they're all rotted out. And I don't like this design anymore anyway. So I've organized a family working bee in the garden today for Easter. Isn't that fantastic? I'm sure they're looking forward to it. And we're gonna get in and make a dent and change these raised beds into something extra special. Saying you reap what you sow can be a little bit misleading because it implies that you just get a handful of seed, throw it in a garden bed, and as long as you put enough in there, you're going to get food. Well, it doesn't work like that, and I'm sure you all know that, but I'm just being a little bit extreme to press home the point that before you sow the seed and after you sow the seed, there's lots of work to be done. And I'm not saying it's overly taxi, but you can have some pretty long and arduous days in the veggie garden, depending on 
the size of your garden and what you have to do. It's not physical every time you walk out into the patch, of course. And once you do have it up and running, plants just tend to grow on their own with little maintenance except for weeding around them and perhaps watering and all that. But the funny thing about gardening is it doesn't seem to be exercise until the end of the day when you're sitting back with a cuppa and you're thinking, oh crikey, I did a fair bit today. Because when you're out here working, time flies. I've never known a day go so quick when I'm out in the garden doing work in the patch. The bottom line is if you don't put the effort into the garden, you're not going to build those beds, maintain those beds or maintain that space to grow enough food to sustain what you want to sustain. So that's why effort had to be in one of my top five tips on how to grow a ton of vegetables. And on that note, the top five tips were sunlight, soil, ecosystem, growing space, and effort. Do all those things right, and you'll grow a ton of vegetables just like I can. If you like this video, make sure you go through the effort to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. And just like that, the old beds were gone.